It's a simple question. How do you power an AC-75? So everything below the water, as it was in the last America's Cup, is powered by the batteries. Everything above the water is powered by the cyclos. Now, if you were to break that down into basic terms, we spin our legs. That moves a hydraulic pump that moves oil around the boat to move the sails. And fundamentally, the more hydraulic oil the cyclos move, the more dynamic, the more we can move our sails, which if you move them in the right way, which we hope we will with the, the trimmers we've got, I'm sure, the boat will go faster. So there's a pretty simple equation, as in the more power the cyclor can uh, output, the more dynamic you can be with the sails. And there's, there's the other side of things that the faster you can charge the hydraulic bomb on board, the hydraulic kind of uh, unit that can you can charge and then use power, the more tactical options it gives you. The kind of the, the quicker you can use your hydraulic system, the more tax you can do in a minute. Whereas if you were less fit, you could do less tax in a minute. So and that, I mean, that's basically stored energy is what yeah, you're talking about, isn't right. it? But that's, so you can store a certain amount of that's pressure, right. that's but right. that's very strictly controlled, isn't it? It's that's limited. Right. That's right. It's a, it's a limited kind of uh, oil squirt, let's say. Um, and sort of, again, teams use that differently in the, in the last America's Cup. Some, some teams live sailed more so when they were grinding that would move the sails and some teams would store up that hydraulic energy and use that hydraulic energy to use the sails and again that will be something in this cup with how teams choose to use their accumulator we call it the hydraulic bomb will, will be kind of a, a system difference across all the teams this time around as well. With the changing rules in this iteration of the America's Cup, you can power the boat. You used to have to sort of use your upper body to power the boat within the rule, and they've now completely opened it up. And it, it seems like it's been an obvious switch for all the teams to go from grinding to cycling. We saw Team New Zealand do it to great effect in 2017, and uh, that's the way the Cup's headed this time round. So yeah, we're gonna see a bit of cycling on these AC75s. Uh, the amount of grinders slash cyclors has reduced, so you're only allowed four to power the boat this time round, whereas last time we had eight grinders. So wow. although we're going to be producing more power for the individual, the amount of people producing that power has reduced. Halved? Yeah, halved. I always remember in Bermuda, we were really worried about where we'd get around the race course. The cats were really energy hungry. Uh, I, I think with these boats, I think we're, I wouldn't say comfortably, but we're, you know, it's, not a, it's not something on massive concern. I think we, uh, you know, the, the, guy, the guys could probably sit, I don't know, probably steady around 500 watts, where you can never do that with your arms. Maybe a, a few of the, 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 the bigger lads probably sit over 500 watts, they're fairly steady. That's a great question. You, I assume with all of the grandfathered 75s that we've seen out uh, with bikes on, and you look at the people that teams have recruited, it looks to me like everyone will use cyclors. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they package those cyclors and put them in the boat. That will be a point of difference, I'd have thought, across the teams. I'd have thought there might be some different cycling styles, let's say. So it'll be interesting in a few months time when people start launching their race boats, how the cyclos fit in the boat. Um, but I would be amazed if anyone went grinding this time around, mm. yeah. The obvious thing would be like, why haven't they got a bunch of cyclists? And, and you, you look at that particularly with our good association with the Ineos Grenadiers and those guys. And the fact is those guys, watts per kilo um, is unbelievable. When, when you classify people, you look at, you know, like maximal aerobic power, Divide it by body weight, you get a, a watts per kilo. And your know, elite cyclists, your Tour de France cyclists, are very, very good at watts per kilo. You know, they're probably up around you know, high six, six point something, uh, near, near seven. You know, our, our guys aren't in that area uh, because they don't need to be. You know, we, 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 don't, we don't strip weight off them. When we go cycling around Palm with those guys, it, it blows my mind what they can do. But they're all between 60 and 80 kilos. Our cyclors are going to be between 90 and 100 kilos. So this isn't a brag, it's a, it's a size thing. Our total power output is higher than the Ineos Grenadiers. Not that much higher, to be honest, but they do it 35 kilos lighter. So it, that kind of puts that group to one side. I think your elite cyclists, so you know, the, uh, 
vinegars, those sort of people. I mean, you know, there's nothing to them. I mean, they, they strip the weight off them so they can get over the mountains. You know, it's a beat, beating gravity. And I think that most of them are probably in the 60, 60 kilo sort of mark, maybe a little bit lighter. The next obvious group that we tapped into was rowers, like similar muscle group, very quad dominant sport. Obviously, Britain's got a fantastic history within rowing, a huge uh, pool of talent there. And we loosely threw it out to some people within that group and, and tested them, um, went for a ride with them, stopped for a coffee and cake to make sure <laughs> they could do that side of things, which, which is obviously really important fitting into this group and, and have come across three or four really amazing athletes out of, out of British rowing now. Heavy, heavyweight rowers tend to be around 90 to 95 kilos. So again, on absolute numbers there, they're quite good for us. You know, they, they're quite big lumps already. Uh, and and you know, they, they come to us in, in a pretty good, uh, physically in a pretty good shape. We, 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 got, we got four rowers. One, uh, one's been with us for a while. So Matt Gottschall's been with us for a while. He was uh, in the last cup, the AC36. Uh, and then we got three, uh, three new rowers. One is in, interesting. I think they, uh, they're, they're naturally lower body athletes. Uh, rather than upper body athletes, so uh, you know they're, they're already quite you know cent the central system is well trained and the legs are well trained, so they they've adapted to cycling quite well. Uh, I'm sure British rowing really hate us, so we've we've taken three of their pretty good rowers. Uh, they, I mean they 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 come with a really good history of training. You know they uh, they, they push pretty hard. You know, row rowing campaigns are tough, so they come to us uh, already in pretty good condition. One issue that will affect all the teams, regardless of whether they use grinders, cyclists or rowers, is the heat. Barcelona in the summer is hot, very hot. We're certainly concerned about overheating. I mean, the, you know, the cockpits are pretty small. They're going to be in the no, no, very limited airflow uh, because obviously air, airflow is, uh, is drag. So, you know, the, everything's designed to be streamlined, you know, aerodynamic. So, you know, the, the, the best way the body calls, calls itself in a, in a non-humid environment like Barcelona would be, uh, you know, sweat, you know, sweat and then sweat evaporating and the subsequent cooling. Uh, we're, we're worried that without the airflow, that the sweat isn't going to be able to evaporate, so it's going to be dripping onto the, onto the deck. Uh, so we're, we're, we're concerned about overheating. We've, we've, looked, uh, we've looked at the power decrement when you overheat. Uh, and, uh, and you know, I think it's the same for every team. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a concern. Some individuals are really good at tolerating it, and uh, the heat. And some some individuals are pretty pretty poor and are very heat affected. Uh, and the, the bigger you are, the more you tend to be heat affected. The training is our focus. If we are not fit enough to power the boat we have, we might have the fastest boat in the America's Cup, and if we're not up to scratch, we're not gonna win anything. So that's very much at the back of our minds. I think this America's Cup is probably gonna come down to that last kind of 200 watts of total power. Could be the difference between being ready to tack or not, or being able to move the traveler as dynamically as the, the trimmer wants or not, and that's, that's the kind of margins we're looking into. So, it looks likely that this time around, arms and upper body strength will be replaced by the crew's legs for all the teams. But the fact remains that for all the technology aboard a modern AC-75, the human power plant is still at its heart. A sustainable future. Yamar.